Yo people, welcome back to the YouTube channel, you're already not time, it is this time for another video. The Blue Review is back here today, Chelsea 1, Inter Milan 1. It was a fair result, I would say. I mean, listen, we had 20 shots to their 7, I believe, their 6 actually, and 7 on target for us, and not many for them, of course. Their chances, I mean, more transitions on their side, more breakaways, possession wasn't a massive gap and gulf between the two teams, 55% possession for us and 45% possession for them. But you could see that we wanted to slow the game down a bit more sometimes, keep the ball um, and move it a bit slower, whereas their breakaways and their, their attacks sometimes were just at lightning speed. They took two, three passes to get from back to front um, quite, quite a few times and it caused us a few issues on the transition, which we'll get to. But we'll start with the 11 because the 11 that dropped was... I wouldn't say at all an 11 that we expect to see against Manchester City. Obviously, Cole Palmer wasn't that in 11. Um, and Cuckoo was not in that 11. Uh, so, you know, even Jackson has just come back from a knock, an injury. So he had to come off the bench today. So there's definitely still tweaks and changes to be made. Caicedo, will he be starting in the Manchester City game? I would kind of almost expect him to. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the starting 11 will be. I think the back four was quite close to exactly what I probably would expect. Um... So, yeah, Chelsea initially, you know, tick for tack, I would call this game. You know, we had, like I said, more chances. But the goal that we conceded to Turam, first of all, what a finish from Turam. That guy today, and there will be a few others I'll speak on, but him in particular and DeMarco on that left-hand side, they're fully fit. <laughs> they are fully fit. Turam is fully fit. He is ready for Serie A this season. If you're a Serie A supporter and you've got clubs um, and allegiances in that league and you're waiting to see if Turam and Inter Milan are ready, he in particular is very ready. Very ready to score goals at the start of the season. Very physically fit. He was powering past our players with ease at times in that defence. And the first goal comes from... You know, it comes from, I feel like no one taking a responsibility to say, I'm going to get this ball back for us, going to get this ball back for Chelsea. The way that they just kind of carry the ball through um, the midfield, play the ball through the midfield. It was two passes from back to front and no one takes responsibility to even make a foul or to absolutely go in and make a clear um, challenge on player, said players. And it just, it just kind of just consecutively just goes on and on until it gets to Turam and he's now alongside Colwell as Fafana's already committed and he's just on the you know he's on his weaker foot but you wouldn't think it with the finish the way that he's just able to run um, and let that hit his left foot foot through the ball top corner Sanchez is not getting anywhere near it and we're 1-0 down we're 1-0 down it's a fantastic finish I think it was probably their first big chance that I could really remember um and they 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 took advantage of that chance. So it was it was a humbler. It was a humbler for us. But like I said, we had our own chances as well. I do feel like in this game, I'm walking away thinking Gu for all of the hard work he would put in, you know, put in a lot of hard work and graft. He was the one that was almost partly creating our chances just off the ball. His off the ball pressing on summer who was brilliant today, um, made some really big saves, made some really instinctive saves, but his pressing today was really good Gyu, really on top of the keeper a lot, trying to win the ball back multiple times, basically created attacks or almost created attacks for us via that. But in terms of overall as a, as a striker, it's not someone that we could be looking to rely upon. I think it's definitely someone that everyone's going to like, everyone's going to take a like into pretty quickly, considering obviously... He's very young, not expecting massive things from him. Will he even be at the club um, next season, considering we've signed Samuel, who wasn't involved today. Pedro Neto has been signed, who's another attacker um, to get goals, but he obviously was showcased to the crowd at half time, and I think even before the game as well. Um, so is there really any space for you, you know, in terms of development, getting minutes, getting attention? Probably not. So we have to look at that. Um, but... I liked his pressing. I enjoyed his his enthusiasm. He's he's been doing that the whole preseason. He kind of just continued that again today. Didn't feel like we created a bundle of chances for our strikers today. I feel like we need to create a lot more chances for our strikers in general. I think Gui in the last game didn't get loads of chances. Jackson, when he came on, didn't get any chances. Um, it seems to all happen around them, but not necessarily to and for them. Um, uh, Madueke, Enzo Fernandez, you know, they had moments, there's some good moments here and there. Drewsbury Hall, very, very quiet in this game. Uh, I kind of see him as a rotational player. I don't think he's in our strongest start in 11. I don't think he's going to be over in Cuckoo, should not be over Palmer, should not be over these guys in the half spaces when the season kicks off, should not really be playing probably over Alavia, Caicedo, Enzo, Trio, fighting for part, uh, pivot partnerships there. So I see him as more of a, a squad player, a rotational player. That's what he kind of costs 
cost that kind of rotational money, that kind of squad player money. So some of you might be really disappointed in his performance today, like, but for me, I don't want to over-expect from him and I don't want to assume that he's going to jump from Leicester to Chelsea and just start shelling out and be one of our key players because I don't, I don't see him as that type of player. I don't see him as that, that level of a player. I see him as a good player and he's been brought in to help maybe Maresca embed his system on the training ground and communicate that across and, and, and pick up things quicker than others. But in terms of the actual ceiling, I'm still expecting other players to be above him in that. Chukomeka, maybe some people will, will involve in that conversation in terms of the talent, but we know that he's on the peripherals of the squad. He didn't get any minutes again today. He's probably potentially going to be on his way out, if not this summer, but maybe, maybe even next summer. Um, just feels like a player that can't keep fit. He needs to stay fit, but also just feels like a player that is starting to just fall by the wayside a little bit. But I hope that doesn't happen because I really do like him. Um, Mudrik today. <sighs> Mudrik is in his make or break season. We know this. Sterling is coming off the bench and playing on that left wing as well. We know Pedro Neto for me is going on that left-hand side. I've said it on the breaking news stream that I did. Pedro Neto is more than capable of playing left wing. He's very equipped at playing both flanks. In fact, he's actually played in his career, in his 157 eight plus game career, a professional career. He's actually played more games, Pedro Neto, on the left wing than he has on the right wing. Even though I know he's predominantly playing on the right wing for Wolves, he can play on the left wing. I've watched him do it. He scored against us actually um, from the left wing, I think at Stamford Bridge and probably actually even uh, at the Molyneux Stadium as well. So he can play at left wing. So he's got a start on left wing and uh, Sterling and Mudrick are going to have to pick up the pieces who will be, even be here at the end of the window, we'll have to see. I don't really mind selling Sterling before Mudrick purely because his wages are so high and he's not worth that in regards to what he gives us on the pitch, in regards to his consistencies, his decision-making. However, I understand that Sterling is better than Mudrick. So from a player quality standpoint, it would make sense for Mudrick to go first, in my opinion. But from a desperation standpoint of Sterling is contracted until 2027. Mudrick is contracted until 2038, 2031. <laughs> Thank God it's not 2038. 2031. Both of them, for me, are not proven to be good enough right now. I'm ready to let either or both go whenever an offer comes in. And Pedro Neto would be my starting left winger. Mudrick didn't do enough today. Um, he's not good enough, in my opinion. But I'm going to let the whole season play out how it does. But I'm highly, highly doubting I'm going to change my opinion on Mudrick um, from what I'm thinking right now. To what I'm thinking at the end of next season. I just can't see it with him. I can't see it. Um, Kukurea, um, Kukurea, uh, <laughs> Haaland is Trembla, uh, Grealish, Cavs, and all of these videos. He's in the team today. He's going to start, I think, against Manchester City on that left back position, especially with Reese James suspended. Gusto will play right back. Um, so good to see him get minutes and clock up some minutes. Kowa had a little scrap with a defender, which he sorted out in the first half. We also, like I said, we could have, we could have won, but Today, minimum deserved a point. We had some nice chances. Cole Palmer had a nice chance when he came on. Colwell hit the post. Um, Nkuku had a lovely overhead kick that almost went in as well. Um, felt like they did bring life to the game, those substitutions when they came on at half time. But then it slowly started dwindling out again for about a 10, 15 minute period where nothing really happened. And then eventually, again, more subs are made as well. Okuchuku comes on. Um, Caicedo now goes to right back, which is a nice little experiment to see because we know James is out, um, injured and suspended. Achim Pong is very young. How much do you want to depend upon him? We'll see. Probably gets conference league games. So you do want to see Caicedo maybe. And, and, and maybe this is the only way to get Enzo, Lavia and Caicedo on the pitch together. But obviously we want to see Gusto as well. But you do use Caicedo as this inverted right back that we saw at Brighton at the Emirates, I believe, a couple of years ago. Um, and Enzo and Lavia then play just ahead of the back line in that way. And then you have all three of them on the pitch without asking any of them to be in the attacking pockets, the half spaces, which I don't really feel like they're going to bring enough to be in those areas. Um, so, yeah. That was good to see, um, just to see something different. Um, and like I said, yeah, many changes to be made in regards to the the quality of the the, the overall team. You know, we need to we need to see more. We need to see more. At the start of the season, we need to see a lot more. It's a big gap between what we've been doing in preseason and what we need to do in the Premier League. It's going to be a really really competitive start to the season. I can I can say that at least these games are going to feel fifty fifty until the system and the players really start to bed into what the manager wants. And hopefully they start to actually up their own individual performances as well. But like I said, the defense on the goal, not great. The goal that we scored set piece, um, 
do or die really that was the end of the game cross comes in from Palmer headed away and Okachuk is just standing in the right place at the right time to sweep it home and he does so very well gets the equaliser and Chelsea come out of the game with a 1-1 um, but like I said all day it felt like DeMarco in particular I need to mention I mentioned Taram need to mention DeMarco DeMarco on that left hand side left wing back in a 3-5 in a 3-5-2 DeMarco was causing problems all game long and again, defensively, we need to be really fixing up and airtighting our, our shit because next season, we can't be conceding the same amount of goals. He was getting down the left-hand side, crossing, no problem. Inverted runs into very dangerous scenarios where he had a header that went straight at Sanchez. And if, if he had actually just taken a touch, I'm pretty sure none of our defenders would have had the instincts and the, the zappity zip to get to him quick enough to actually stop him from scoring. And I feel like our defenders, they sometimes they play in slow-mo in preseason, if I'm to do a preseason review, some of our centre backs have been playing in slow mo. 40 year old Thiago Silva was maybe the last one to 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 be expected to get to the the goal line and clear things off the line, but he was always making himself very much get there and 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 make that 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 impact, make that goal saving challenge. I'm not really getting that from the centre backs that we've got that they're alert, switched on to make those very very you know small differences, but big. Um, in terms of the scoreline and make that extra yard and make that extra run and make that extra commitment to stop the ball from going into the back of the net. feels like everybody's kind of playing on slow-mo, playing on, um, you know, playing on, uh, I don't know, some some weird alternate universe where you don't need to um, have, be switched on. You don't need to get back. You don't need to um, engage with the football and make a tackle and, you know, stop things from happening. There were some nice clearances in the first half as well from some players. I think Fafana made a nice clearance. Kukurea made some last-ditch challenges as well when balls were coming into the box. But we need this to be consistently all game throughout and people need to stay alert. So, yeah, like I said, 1-1. One, one. We could have we could have maybe said that we potentially deserved to win. We came close. I think even Colwell, when he hit the post, I look back on the, the chance and I think you were so close to the goal. Could you not have just scored? But he hit the post. It's unlucky. Um, but yeah, like I said, we need to continue to improve. We've got a long way to go. I feel like Chelsea, to round off, are going to be in that ninth to uh, fourth. That's the kind of area that Chelsea are going to be playing in with Man United, with Tottenham, with Aston Villa, with Newcastle, with West Ham, ourselves. That's our group this season. Liverpool, I think, will be third. And then, obviously, you know, the others will, up, will be up there. But that's the kind of group that I, I associate with us right now. That's our group. We're playing in there again, same as last season. And we just have to hope that this team, in terms of the difference, they are able to make it fourth and not make it sixth and seventh. So we'll see what happens. But that's my analysis from that game. Um... Don't overdo it in terms of the, the match is over now. Um, don't get too stressed. Summer made some really good saves. Like I said, he kept them he kept them afloat for, for, for large spells in the first half as well. Made some really good saves. Um, but it is what it is. It's not too important that we didn't win. It's just more about the performance and no injuries, which is also good. So yeah, smash up the likes, guys. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. In a bit, people. Peace.